He'll be there by now. He'll be checking in with them and going up to their room. Probably some fancy sweep knowing Tony. He does like to make a good impression. Of course, when he's bored with her, he won't care what she thinks of him. But she won't know that yet, poor cow. Then when he's dumped her, I expect she'll be on the phone to me, trying to shock me with news of my husband's affair. What puzzles me is why they think I'll still be surprised. Women know their husbands. We know what they are. My husband, Tony, is a cheat. Sounds like an insult to a meeting, doesn't it? My name's Claire, and I'm a cheat's wife. Don't get me wrong, he's not a bad husband. He's never hit me. He earns good money, and he loves the kids to bits. He just cheats all the time. I used to drive myself mad wondering when it started and why he did it. Maybe it was me. What if I was really bad at sex? Did he want something that I wouldn't do? Maybe I wasn't attractive enough, slim enough, big breasted enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And then one day I realised he does it because he can. He does it because there's always some stupid woman willing to believe all the rubbish he tells her about how beautiful she is and how sexy she is and how he'd leave his wife for her if he could. Why don't these women ever realise it takes more to make a marriage than being beautiful and sexy? Being beautiful and sexy won't get the children to school or clean the house or give him a shoulder to cry on if he doesn't get that promotion that he wanted. Of course he won't leave. Tony will never leave me. Well, don't ask me how I know that. I just do. I know him. He wasn't so bad when the kids were at home. He was a bit more discreet then. And you hate that word, discreet. It always sounds so secretive and grubby to me. In fact, for the first eight years of our marriage, I, he was so discreet, I didn't know what was happening. Then, one year, we went to his work's Christmas party. And it was all weird. I couldn't explain it at first. All the other wives were trying to avoid me, like I had the plague or something. And I was just coming out with the ladies, and I saw Tony talking to Janice from marketing, and the penny dropped, just like that. They all knew, and they were trying to keep their distance, just in case my husband's unfaithfulness was catching. I could see them all holding on to their husband's arms that much tighter, laughing at their husband's jokes that much harder, thinking how lucky they were that their husband wasn't like Tony. And I went to one of those Christmas parties again. Janice from marketing was the first one to call me, actually. She was so upset I almost felt sorry for her. Almost. Maybe Tony's better at sex with them than with me. I never found him particularly expert at it, to be frank. Still, that's usually the woman's fault, isn't it? Apparently. That was when I made my mistake, you see. When Janice called, I could have confronted him about it, but I decided not to say anything. Now I knew, and he knew that I knew, but nothing was ever mentioned. I just ignored it and hoped it would go away. For a while, I told myself I was being a good wife, that I was being forgiving like a good wife should, that I was thinking of the children. But I don't think I'm really that noble. I was just too scared. Scared he'd leave, scared he'd say he didn't love me anymore. Scared that he wouldn't be sorry enough and I'd hate him for it. Of course he was much worse after that. It was almost as if he thought he'd got permission. And I suppose in a way he had. If I didn't want him to do it, I should have said. I'm leaving him a letter. I know that's the coward's way out, but I haven't been brave up to this point, so why start now? I expect he'll be shocked. He certainly won't be expecting it, and that's good. How should it hurt more that way? I hope so.